Okay, so we're going to make a a dog thing. And it's um I'm just calling it a dog thing because it's just the basic principles of a quadruped. I'm going to start with a box and in my perspective view, I'll just alt W this so it's big and uh go ahead and draw a box. And I will set these settings in the modifier tab. I want this box to be taller than it is wide. Or I should say longer. Something like this. Maybe not that long. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to right click on this and convert it to an edible poly. And I think I'm not going to have it be purple. It'll be gray. And I'm going to get the wired edges wired edges, edge faces, so that we can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so the way I, the reason I'm starting with a box is because if we started with a sphere, we would have these triangular poles. And when we're doing things for games and for animation, it's best to keep quads. We can have triangles if you can hide them. Inadvertently, there will be some, but generally we try to avoid them. So, uh, let's see, modifier tab, we have this box, and I, but I want it to be round in shape. So I'm going to get the turbo smooth, and in the iterations, I will use two. So you can already see we have the kind of a cylindrical type shape here. Spherical, I should say. Well, not even spherical. It's round. Okay, it's rounded. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is collapse it here because this is going to be basically our base base mesh and you can see it turned it into a mesh so I'll make that be an editable poly I'm going to hit F so to be clear you should be in the front view like this and if I hit L you would have it the long way like this right so in my top view this is going to be my front in my left view this will be the front so we're going to go with it like that um, also be sure that when we're, we're working with this, I know I've started with a new, uh, file and generally this will come in, sorry, right click on that at 10 centimeters. So if I say 100, now this is a, a meter in here. So that means that this is generally too small. Well, that's kind of big. Uh, I'll say a meter. Okay. It's going to be a big dog thing. It'll be about a meter big dog guard dog. It's a guard dog thing. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to check to make sure that my units are good. One unit equals one centimeter. That's correct. And our metric centimeter, this is our display unit scale when we look at this out here to match. And by right clicking on any of the snaps, toggles, buttons then we can have this. The the major lines and the perspective view means that when we're in perspective view uh, there will be seven meters out from the origin in all directions, right? So if I were to make this 12, there it went 12. If I made it 2, it would be 2, which actually that's not bad for what we're doing. Um, if I said F, for full uh, for front and zoomed out a little bit, you could see these major grid lines that are happening here. That's happening every 10. If I said every five, you can see how that changed. If I said every 20, right? So that's what that's about. Um, I rarely change those. It's really the grid spacing that is important to, in order to make sure that what you are modeling is relative in scale. Um, you can always change it, sure. Like you brought it into the game engine, it's too small and you scale it up, but that's kind of a pain and it's a sloppy way to do it. Um, also you want to make sure that your object is correct scale for physics reasons. When you're animating things, it has a general uh, size and given what it's made out of, if you were to put some physics and colliders and things of that nature on there, it, it knows how to respond if it's the correct size. Okay.
enough about that. Um, I'm going to go to the front view. And I, I like to snap to the origin. I like to get as close to the origin as possible. Even if I were modeling over here, okay, that's close enough. But I really do like to model uh, on the origin here. So I'm going to put that there. And you can see that when we put the turbo smooth modifier on here, it it short it it made this volume smaller so it looks like it's above the the origin i'm going to actually pull that up even further i'm going to select all of everything here and just kind of pull that up here um and i did it that way so that the pivot point for the object would stay at the origin and what i did is i moved the sub object right so that no matter where I move the sub-object, the origin of the object or the pivot point of the object will stay there. So I'm going to have these legs come down, so that's fine. Okay, so front view. Uh, polygon, and I'm only going to select half, and I'm going to delete it. And I'm deleting the right side for a reason. And that reason is that you'll notice when we have our uh, side view, we have left and right. And left has a hotkey, L and right does not. So if I hit L, I can see this side, right? Okay, front view, we are going to add a symmetry. I have the symmetry button here. You can go find this in your modifier stack. It's the last S word. I just have it in my buttons. It's gonna show up like this. I'm gonna flip it. And the reason for this is, once again, I'm gonna go to the show end result and if I turn on a sub object you'll see now that the um, as we look at it the left side is orange so if I hit L it's on the orange side and if I, I hit F again to go to the front the reason is the orange side is the side that we model let me turn off my snaps the orange side is the side that we model from we can't grab over here right um, this is kind of locked in symmetry to whatever we do to the orange side. So that's why I deleted this side and, and brought it back with the symmetry so that when we model, we'll model on the orange side. And when we hit L, it'll be on the orange side, right? And the irony here is that it's the right side of the object because this is the front. And I'll pull this up just to be sure. If I hit F, there it is right this is the front if I hit top you can see this is the front here front right okay let me undo all that crazy um, so if we're on the left side this is the front this is actually the right side of the character but it's our view of the left if we're looking at it I know it's a pain to have to delete the side that when you add the symmetry it's going to flip but in the long run it's going to save you a headache because hitting L and being able to model on the orange side. All right polygons so I'm going to start with the legs I'm going to go ahead and um, click the parts that I know are going to be legs I'm going to use these this is going to be a good starting point it gives us a fair amount of geometry and The way I'm going to do this is use the extrude with the settings. And it's just going to go ahead and put these things out here. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to rotate. It's only going to work so far. Uh, I'm going to rotate these in a little bit on the, the green this way. It won't work this way, right, because we have to do one of those one at a time. So I'm going to hold Alt and deselect those. Go this way. Um, another way in general I end up doing it like this is I grab the vertices and I can grab all of these actually I do it at the same time grab all those vertices and I'm gonna hit R for scale and I'm gonna make sure that it's not like in this mode it can be in here though so left view if I go on the Y and push that down it's, it's sort of like I'm closing the gap I'm scaling the gap really super small so everything ends up being rather flat um, this way. So now I'm in the front view. I'm going to go ahead and move these things in. 
a little bit. And you can see there's a little bit of a, a weird twisting happening here. So if I hit B for bottom, you can see how this is kind of twisted a little bit. I'm going to hold Alt there and Alt for here and move those back a little bit. I'm going to move these back a little bit. Kind of pointy. I kind of want to round this out a little bit is what I want to do. And I'm noticing these, um, the edges here might be a little bit problematic. So far, not too bad. Okay, so I'm also wanting to round out where the leg is sort of coming from. I'm in the bottom view. So everything I do is somewhat orthographic to the to the ground. All right, now on this side, this is going to want to be up a little bit. Let me hit L. So this is the back. And I know that this is curving around, right, like this. So I hit L. I'm going to bring these in a little bit closer because butts don't stick out quite that far. And this, I'm going to kind of line this up a little bit better. I can grab these and hit my scale tool and line those up a little bit. Kind of square them up. This eventually this is going to um, shoot off and become a neck. So I'm not going to worry too much about that right there. But I am a little bit more concerned with this back end. Okay, so here's the other thing. Anytime you extrude, you're going to lose the smoothing groups, right? So we need to put that back. It, it, it'll help us if we can put our smoothing groups back. All right, so I'm going to, in the uh, polygon, I'm going to just say Control A and that will select everything. Thing is, I don't want them down here, so I'm going to hold Alt and undo just at the bottom of the feet. I want those to remain flat, so I kind of know where they are visually. And I'm going to, because those, I think everything was one, I'm just going to say Clear All and give it number nine. Number nine. Okay, apologies if you don't know that song. Uh, all right, so that edge is going that way. All right, so let's sit front. And I also want, I hit L. I also want, I'm going to get this like only one side. I also want these to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to scale those. Alt for that, so I can just scale the front here. I'm going to push this back. All right, only what's inside. All right, I'm going to explain to you why I'm moving these things a little bit like this. This is going to be the shoulder. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, We're going to kind of follow a little bit. Now, this image is, is kind of backwards from what, what we're going to do here. Uh, but the thing is, is quadrupeds share a similar muscular and skeletal structure to ours. It's, it's just sort of slightly modified for the creature, right? So here's the shoulder blades like we have. This would be the shoulder. This is our upper arm. This would be the forearm, right? This would be our elbow. This is the wrist. And then this would be like our fingers, right? The tails are just an extension of the spine. They just keep going. Uh, hip. This would be the knee. This is actually the heel. 
and then this would be the foot this way walking on the toes right so it, this is a dog and if we were to look at a deer right let's look at this deer oh that's a small deer that's silly well you can see similar thing here's the uh, knee this would be the heel and the bones have evolved to be just one into a toe here rather than having you know five fingers there's just one um, so really that's kind of like a fingernail there this is the elbow the wrist and this would be like the long uh, metacarpal bones in our in your hand this would be your first knuckles and then your fingers here so similar structures here is an a chimp right and so I think that's actually kind of small um, so similar to us uh, smaller little tail right you don't really see it and there's the femur and then what you see so there's a space in here right this would be like where your pectoral muscles go so you want to be careful when you pull down the appendages of whatever your animal is that you give it this space in between here right and and knowing some of the anatomy of your creature is going to be helpful when um, when you're uh, trying to create a believable uh, you know animal sort of thing we are familiar with we we are familiar with the um anatomy enough of what's on our planet that if we saw something we would know it was off right and that's the thing that you have to remember you would know you would know that it's off people will know when your structure is off or, or what you're doing is is not right so just kind of remember that when you're modeling it's better to go ahead and follow some sort of a reference that we're all familiar with so that uh, it's believable we want believable creatures even when it's a cartoon sort of animal uh, we still will f understand it better if we can have something to relate to in terms of its anatomy right we know the forearm the the legs we know knees we know elbows we know we know shoulders so these are the sorts of things that we will uh, rely on when we're trying to figure out what it is that we're looking at right okay so I just kind of tweak some things around it's always better to go s go large I mean when I say large go um, we have larger uh, polygons here right we're not we're not working with thousands of them just yet in fact if I hit seven we can see our, our total over here I have it uh, what, what we need to do is change this so it's useful to us um, seven it's just the number seven if I hit the plus sign and uh, configure viewports here in the statistics tab is where we can have our triangle count we don't need frame rate we're not animating vertex counts helpful if you want to make sure that something's welded or not and total plus selection is good so I'm going to apply that so here is our section so if I were to select here you can see I have two vertices selected oh three it says three I guess it's counting the let's see if it goes like this okay if I go here is it two it's counting the other side no one three I wonder why three. Hmm. That says two. Why is that two? It doesn't look like two. Weird. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because the symmetry. It's it's counting it. It just doesn't know it is. Okay. Or I don't know it is. I do now okay uh, left view so let's continue with this um, so this is going to be sort of my elbow area is kind of what I'm following with right uh, this would be the chest area 
um, of my creature. So I'm going to push this back a little bit here because I want, I actually kind of want this whole part here to be more of what's going to be coming out. Let's flatten this up a little bit more because this is going to extrude out. All right, and then when, when we do this, I'll have to fix this geometry a little bit, but I'll show you. No worries. Okay, so, uh, and this is going to be the knee, kind of the knee area here. And so here we go, polygons. I've got those and these. Might as well uh, extrude them at the same time. I need the... I need the uh, geometry, so OK. And I will go ahead and reselect them. Wait, not like that. This way. This way. Why aren't you letting me? Oh, right. This thing. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Those. All of them. I just want to, uh, nine I said, right? So they're smooth again. Okay, left view. Vertices. Grab these, and I'm going to kind of push this back and rotate it a little bit. I'm also going to shrink it, right? Because as, as legs go, As legs go, they get smaller as they go down. And you can see that this is already starting to kind of take a little bit of shape here. Um, there are some things that happen that, that we can change. And that is like there are these hidden edges in quads that I can see right here. This is kind of irritating to me. So let me close this. Um, if, our in edge, if I'm in edge, if you're in the edge tool, bleh, if you're in the edge tool, um, we can turn this. Looking for the turn. Did I close it? Paint deformations. It's not those. Ah, edit. Edit edges. Somehow I got that closed. Okay, so here's the turn. And you can see these. Uh, edges here inside so um these can be turned i feel like that's that's uh pulling funny so there's that um something like this you can see how it's changing the look of that geometry there and that might have been okay like that so if you have issues with some of the geometry that is going a certain way like that might be a little bit better that way. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe not. At any rate, we can have this turn edge. All right, let's get back to this. Left. Um, vertices seem to be the easiest thing to... Um, the smaller pieces to to get the proper shape right sometimes I'll use an edge to move but mostly it's going to be a vertex so let's say we want a tail on here let's start looking at that so if we have this spine that's coming over like this the tail would probably come from right here and then go out right and the other thing about tails is we want to model them such that they would have um, they would be in the in the right way for rigging, right? Everything that we're doing here at the moment would be the with the idea that this is gonna rig, get rigged and move. Okay? So the easiest way to to do that is to model it in a pose that's kinda orthographic and even. So we wouldn't want this tail to come down and curl up because then we'd have to have the bones go and curl up. And then we'd weight it that way, and it would be awkward. So if we had it straight out, then we could rig the bones straight out and weight it straight out, and that would make it easy. So that's how we're going to do it. And we're not just going to extrude right off of here. We're going to create a little geometry in here. 
with the inset tool and I'm just gonna say okay because I need to fix this up so I'm gonna grab this geometry and delete it I'm gonna take this and move it only over on the Y until these things kinda of snap together uh, I'm gonna go in the top view and just kinda of really look here okay perspective oh, come on really really honestly okay so there's that and then I'm gonna pull that up a little bit I'm also gonna make it a little smaller so this might be one of those times when I grab the edge and uh, just make it a little smaller All right, I'm going to get the vertex and I'm going to move this on the edge. I'm going to constrain it to the edge because I want to round this out, this shape. Again, it's it's easier to prepare for the next piece of geometry before you create it than it is to try and do all this afterwards. So like if I extruded this, then I'd have to round it all out, but it's easier to round it out here first and then when I extrude it, um, it's it's round so I'm gonna say okay to that whoa undo my constraint put this back now here's the other thing um, I'm gonna go ahead and make it smaller while I'm at it because as it goes out it gets smaller right we need to delete that inside face so this is what happens when you extrude on a, a seam such as this seam that we have, this, uh, our symmetry seam down the middle, right? These were not on a seam. Here's our seam right down the middle. So these extruded fine and we have two separate pieces as we, as, as intended, right? But now this one, uh, is on a seam. So if I were to undo the symmetry or turn the eye off, you'll see now there's a face. And if I left that there, Let's do this. I'm going to go to Edible Poly and put in my Turbo Smooth. And I'm going to undo the, well, this is what you get, right? Because it's it's Turbo Smoothing with that face in mind. So if I turn off the symmetry and turn off my Turbo Smooth and get this face and delete it, and now we can turn our things back on. Show end result here. Now we can turn our things back on and we have a, a decent tail. Well, a decent crop tail. We need to give that thing some more length. Um, but you get the idea, right? So that's why we need to uh, delete that inside face. Okay, so I'm going to turn off Turbo Smooth because it's easier to model with fewer things. I'm going to make that even smaller, I think. And anytime you make it smaller, you need to put it back. Just kind of pop it there. All right, let's extrude that again. Say OK. And immediately, well, I'll put it back together first. Delete. And make this smaller. And whoa. Put it back together. Uh left view. Right, so now this the spine I could probably even lower all that. All right, so if this was a tail and we were going to rig this to be, um, if it's a tail, it is a tail. Uh, if we're going to rig this, then the tail won't move very well if we don't give it some edges. So I'm going to come in here and just get both of these and get connect. And that will probably be a good amount given that we also have our turbo smooth. So there, that gives us enough edges to have a nice tail. 
that will that will move. Okay. Um, so we can also, uh, if I turbo smooth on, and we have this um, show end. Res if I'm here, show end result, and have my uh, vertices on, you can see that we can we can kind of move our our cage. We call this the cage. Kind of give them a little bit more of a, a butt. All right. And let's give them a little bit more of a physique. Okay, so top view. So I'm just kind of going about um, shaping him a little bit more. Her, it. Because it's easier to do it before you start adding too much geometry. Kind of get a feel for what's going on here. It's kind of like a a soft select doing this this way. Wait until I get that collapsed. Curses. We go. Silently modeling. All right, left view. So I'm just sort of uh, getting the shape of the quads about the same size, and I think I need to make a, a cut in here. So I'm going to turn off my turbo smooth and um, let's see. To move this up a little bit. Making sure that uh, smoothness, there's no real jaggies going on. Like this is a little wonky. Let's pull this down and this up. All right, I'm gonna take this and move it back. And get my edges, grab this and connect. Okay. And you can see it's sort of starting to take shape a little bit, uh, given some anatomy principles, anatomical principles. 
pull these in a little bit. Right, it's a little narrower in the back because the rib cage is sort of a the barrel the barrel chest of the rib cage here like this. So all right, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's starting to kind of take shape, right? Let's go in our front view and let's deal with these. Grab all of this front. Pull that in a little bit. All right, so. Chest. I guess both of these can go in a little bit. I'm going to turn off my symmetry. Sometimes it's nice to be able to get on the inside. Just kind of round that a little bit. That's the elbow. All right. Pull that back a little bit. Okay, left view. All right, we're getting a little bit better shape here, all right? We started with a box. So this is actually, <laughs> they, speaking of, they actually call this box modeling. So we start with a box, and um, sometimes it gets called uh, sub-D modeling uh, because we are um, subdividing subdivision, sub D. Uh, maybe it's too, a little bit too much. Hmm. I think that should go that way. That edge. That might work a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so if we're going to take a picture, let's take a picture. All right, all right, it's kind of getting there, yeah. Okay, um, going to extrude the neck. So let's get polygons. Actually, let's kind of uh, get this ready. So if we're going to pull the neck out from, say, this area here. All right, let's get our vertices and we're going to round, round this out a little bit like this. And we can pull that back a little bit. Let's pull that that way a little bit. Left view. I'm going to flatten this a tad. So this is going to come up. Okay. Right on. And polygons. So let's extrude. Left. And I'm going to hit the plus sign for another one and say OK. All right, so let's, now we can move this vertex up. So we have this edge loop this way. And I am also going to get my polygons Control and Control. Again, I don't want the top, but I want this to 
match up with what? Not you. All right, so the this is smooth. Um, but this is not. Now you see this weirdness happening here, right? That's because of our faces. So, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna try not to move it. Hit delete. All right, so now we have this. That's our, kind of our neck is happening. Okay, left view. Let's uh, adjust this neck. Right again, I'm going to move these. Um, I'm going to turn this, this one, and that one, I think. Front view. Mm, that one needs to go that way. Let me make sure. Yes, perfect. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, maybe like that. All right, so when you see this, this is just means that this is uh, overlapped a little bit. And it's okay because we're gonna take care of that near the end. All right, so I think that'll work fine for now. Um, there's a geometry, we could have this come up and over this way or, or then See, that would go that way, and this would go this way. I think this is going to be fine. All right. Left view. All right, so let's finish up these little toes. Extrude. Okay. Let's get the grid back as G. I'm just going to go ahead and put this here. Well, let's rotate a little bit much like this. All right, so I'm going to get the edge tool coming through here and connect. Vertices, uh, edge, pull this down a little bit. All right, polygon. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to extrude these out a little bit. And shape them before I go any further. 
whoa, make sure I'm not in my edge mode or a constrained edge. Actually, let's put these closer. All right, so I'm I'm moving these in position because this these are going to be toes. Well, I don't want to grab there. All right, so let's round this out a little bit. Even this up. There's our little funny toes. Okay, so uh, see how it rounded this. So if we go to our Turbo Smooth, we can turn our smoothing groups here, and it's going to pay attention to our smoothing groups. And it just extruded that out. So we can change that. Click here, and or I might have missed those. There we go. All right, let's get these little tiles. I'm going to undo this. And so what I'm going to do here with these uh, polygons, and let me get my vertex. Push that up. Let me grab all these and make them planer. All right, so here we go. We have this. Polygon, I'm going to select each one of these like this. And oh, we can adjust that. So I'm going to want to change that edge. Let's turn that. And let's go like that. All right, polygon. Um, we're going to use that inset again. Inset, we're going to go like this, but we're not going to want to inset them all like this. We're going to do them by polygon, so each one has its own. And so we'll lessen that a little bit so that it looks something like that and say OK. And I'm going to pull them all out a little bit. Kind of doing this. There's that one. I think I could pull them out a little bit more. It's sort of like extruding, but it's it doesn't pull them out for you. Right? Okay, so these little toes kind of want this to be forward a little bit more. And let's grab these. Oops. <laughs> toes. All right, we might want these toes to be a little bit longer. Let's look. Like they might want to come out a little bit more. And the other thing is this edge. Not that one, this one. Okay, so we can pull them all down a little bit. And let's see what we got. Turbo smooth. Okay, so those are some funky little toes. 
Let's make them a little bit bigger. Alright, so... Toes. I'm going to go ahead and get those all flat again. And let's grab these vertices. Alright, let's take a picture and see what that looks like. Oops. Eh, it's not horrible. I should probably get the smoothing groups going in on there. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, round that out too. So, clear all, nine. And left view. Let's Let's fix this up. Okay, so I'm going to go be on the bottom and turn off Turbo Smooth for a second. And right here, so we have this like heel thing happening, which is kind of a weird geometry and it just sort of happened this way, but we can fix this. So I'm going to get my edge and uh, cut. And see, we can't, we can't target weld across here right we can't target weld across the face so what we need to do is cut an edge so I'm going to cut this edge from here to here and then now I can go to my vertex and I can target weld because now I'm target welding across an edge not a face okay left view And let's see. Just kind of rounding this out a little bit. toes <laughs> toes all right um I'm going to continue the uh, rest on a an, an, an new video because this is getting kind of long, um, almost an hour. So I'm going to finish this front and then add in the next video.